Hello everyone, and welcome to my Duel Today official news channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Stephanie wonders at home about Chad's sudden openness to giving Everett a chance. Chad tells a falsehood about having finally woken up. Stephanie is still dubious until Chad claims he came to see that Everett wasn't being sincere. She assures Chad that he was correct. Though he now realizes there isn't, Everett did hold out hope that they would have a shot. If that's what she wants, Chad wants to put things right between them and take them back to their amazing past. Xander tells Everett he must let him go at the spectator. Everett, in shock, queries why. Xander lies that his partner Gwen didn't enjoy his work glorifying Leo, who betrayed her, after flashing back to Chad's offer. She then gave him a call to fire him. He is not believed by Everett. Steve believes that Constantine had a helper during the kidnapping in order to appear heroic in Kayla's office. Kayla laughs at such a drastic suggestion. Like Kayla, Sarah thinks Constantine is charming. But the day before Victoria was abducted, she did tell Maggie about her first worries regarding him. Steve believes that Constantine heard her. Sarah acknowledges that it's conceivable and explains that after Constantine saved Victoria, her feelings for him shifted. Steve grinned and said his plan had been a hit. If Constantine has a co-conspirator, Kayla asks, who the hell is it? Steve plans to investigate. Alex accuses Theresa of pursuing Alex's inheritance as he marches inside the Kyriakis estate and confronts Constantine. Why Constantine would think that, and why is it relevant to him, is the question Alex poses. Maggie follows them, curious about the same thing. Although Constantine regrets going too far, he was worried about Theresa's intentions. Alex assures him that he doesn't have to be because he got to know Theresa before they both realized he was Victor's kid. Theresa claims that she used to seek guys for their money. But that is no longer the case since she has too much self-respect. Maggie concurs that Theresa has made significant progress. With regret, Constantine asks Maggie to pardon him. She can, of course. She is aware that his only concern is their family. Stephanie tells Chad at their apartment that they've been acting more and more like an elderly married couple lately, going through the motions rather than addressing their mutual objectives, Chad reasoned that it would be beneficial for them to have some alone time without the children. Try to make an effort to enjoy each other. That would be very nice for Stephanie. They share a kiss. Sarah tells Kayla she hopes Steve is mistaken about Constantine after he leaves. She then admits that the experience of being kidnapped made her and Xander closer. She had previously been afraid to trust Xander, and even more afraid that she would allow herself to fall in love with him once more. They are currently watching to see what transpires between them. Even though Xander isn't her favorite person, Kayla still wants Sarah to be content. She remembers how her family initially disapproved of her relationship with bad boy Steve. She is aware of how difficult it is. However, Maggie is Xander's biggest supporter, as Sarah makes clear. Maggie takes Theresa and Alex to the kitchen at the estate so they may pack up leftovers to go. Constantine is alone himself in the living room, stewing when Steve gives him a shoulder tap. As Steve outlines his discoveries in Greece, Constantine's forced smile begins to dissolve. If he goes back to Greece and never sets eyes on the country again, he swears not to inform Maggie about his falsehoods. In the square, Alex performs a Constantine impression to lift Theresa's spirits. She stops him before he can pull off a best Robert De Niro impression, laughing. Since he doesn't know her, he advises her not to worry about what Constantine said. Alex, are you certain about that? Xander asks, emerging out of nowhere. In the square, he noticed Theresa with Constantine, and she didn't appear to be requesting directions. In an attempt to deflect their argument, Theresa accuses Xander of attempting to steal her editor at Bella. Alex intervenes when Xander makes fun of her. Xander believes Victor is putting his confidence in this useless piece of paper and rolling over in his grave over his secret son. He gets punched by Alex. 
When Sarah arrives, she is furious and is escorted out by Xander. Alex Brave is called by Theresa for defending her. She is not Xander's problem, Alex assures her. All he desires is what he cannot have. Even if Xander throws the worst tantrums, he will never be able to switch places with him. Theresa's visage wavers from guilt. Stephanie and Chad are making out as their door is knocked on. Everett sees it opened by Chad. I apologize for interrupting, but you wanted to inform Stephanie that they will not be collaborating. Because of Gwen, his silent partner, Xander sacked him. Everett reassures Stephanie that her PR strategy isn't to blame, despite her accusation. Nevertheless, given that he recruited her, he is unsure if she will continue to work for the paper. What will he do now, she wonders. Everett will find a solution. Pretending astonishment, Chad bids Everett farewell and walks away. While Chad is at home reassuring Stephanie that Everett's firing wasn't her fault, Everett makes a call to Gwen from outside the pub. Hoping they can communicate, he leaves a message. Maggie tells Constantine that Steve wants him to leave Salem when she arrives at the home. Constantine acknowledges that he misled Maggie on the tablecloth when she questions why. When Steve asks Constantine to go on, he admits that he also lied about his friendship with Victor. All the rest, however, has been fact. Steve advises him to inform Maggie of the kidnapping. Constantine becomes furious that it is implied that he planned it, but he claims to know who was responsible. Chad is engaging in risky behavior on Days of Our Lives. To remove Everett from his position at the Spectator and his base in Salem, he simply spent a small money and twisted Xander's arm. To exacerbate the situation, he simply ran to Stephanie and told her that he was being too harsh on poor Everett. There doesn't seem to be much chance left for their relationship when the truth about how deceptive he was in getting rid of Stephanie's ex surfaces, and trust us, it will, especially when he partners with someone as volatile as Sander. We have a feeling that Steve's impending breakup may coincide with their reunion, especially since she recently found out that Everett was going to pop the question to her when he allegedly went into a coma. Everett seemed a little eager to move in with Chad even though her you sure do get around comment was more than a little inappropriate given that she had only been in one meaningful relationship and one with Alex before he vanished into a coma. And it's been particularly apparent given how slowly he's moved on after losing Abigail in almost every other area, including moving on with a committed relationship. But Stephanie is an adult woman who was living away in Seattle as Abigail Klein noted in an interview with Soaps.com. Subsequently, in her 30s, she relocated to Salem and resumed living with her parents. She may be under pressure to be in a different stage of life at this time, in my opinion. She is determined to maintain her autonomy while also being independent. That's where she goes when she moves in with someone she loves and lives like an adult, instead of living with Kayla and Steve's child as does her determination that, regardless of Chad's opinion, she is a grown woman and should be able to deal with her ex. It has to do with self-reliance and liberty. She doesn't, however, necessarily make the right decisions all the time. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.